What's up guys, welcome back. We officially made it through the holidays and now it's time to get back into our normal routine. So today I'm gonna show you how to make this delicious steak dinner. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. Let's get this party started by talking about the star of the show, which is this beautiful two and a half inch thick T-bone steak. The T-bone steak has a T-bone right in the middle. I know that's genius, right? but it's comprised of the strip on the left side and over here is typically where the filet would be for a porterhouse. But with a T-bone steak, you only get a little bit of a filet, which is why they're a little bit cheaper than a porterhouse. When you're doing the reverse sear method, you want a steak that's at least two to two and a half inches thick. So this is a nice sized piece of meat here. And the very first pro tip I'm gonna give you guys for cooking steak is to make sure that the meat starts to come up to room temperature. You never wanna cook an ice cold steak right out of the fridge. It's not gonna cook as evenly. So allow it to sit out on the counter for about 15 to 20 minutes. We're also gonna season it up thoroughly with some kosher salt, and then we're gonna go down with some of my all-purpose seasoning, which is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. At the time of this recording, the all-purpose seasoning is currently sold out due to high demand and some supplier delays, but I appreciate all the support. I'll be fully restocked in the early part of January, so be on the lookout for that. But back to the steak, guys. We need to make sure that this bad boy is seasoned adequately and evenly on all sides. And another quick reminder, guys, that all the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below, so don't forget to check Check that out. Now, one of the most important aspects of cooking a perfect reverse sear steak is monitoring the internal temperature of the steak, and I have partnered with Chef's Temp to do just that. This Quad X Pro food thermometer is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen or worked with. I'm super impressed by the quality, and it's awesome because you can cook up to four things at the same time and monitor all of the different internal temperatures simultaneously. And that's super important when you're doing the reverse sear method on a steak. You want to monitor that internal temperature until it gets up to about 100. 110, 115 degrees, and then remove it from the oven and then we're gonna sear it off in a hot cast iron skillet. And then finally, we're gonna use their final touch digital food thermometer to register the final temperature to make sure that we didn't overcook our steak. All right, so now that I've shown you all my hardware, I'm gonna show you guys how to cook these Brussels sprouts. You wanna make sure that they're nice and clean and then we're gonna chop the stem piece off at the end and then cut them right in half. As you do this, you wanna make sure that you reserve any of the shavings that might fall off of the Brussels sprouts because we're gonna add those towards the end of the cook and they get nice and crispy and delicious. They add beautiful texture to your bacon and Brussels sprouts. For the pork patrol out there that doesn't eat bacon, you can use beef bacon for this recipe or just leave the bacon out all together and throw some mushrooms or onions and peppers in the mix. You can really customize this to whatever you like. When I was on a low carb diet, bacon, Brussels sprouts, and steak was one of my go-to meals during the week. So you can do this recipe and make it any day during the week. It comes together really quickly, super delicious, and relatively healthy depending on how you feel about bacon. And right on cue, I'm adding my bacon right to the skillet over low heat at first because you want all the fat to render from the bacon and get nice and crispy. But we want that fat to be at the bottom of the skillet because that's gonna add flavor to our Brussels sprouts. For my folks out there that don't eat pork, no big deal. You can use a little butter or avocado oil and get the same effect from the bacon. Minus the delicious pork flavor, but hey, we'll talk about that later. Once you have your bacon fat or your butter or whatever in the bottom of the skillet, you wanna turn the heat off and lay these Brussels sprouts face down into that oil. I do this with the heat off because if the Brussels sprouts are wet, they'll pop up and you know you don't wanna burn your hands. So do this with the heat off, that way you avoid any oil splatter and you protect yourself. And you're basically just trying to get a nice char on the face side of the Brussels sprout which I'll show you here in just a second. If you notice that it's absorbing the avocado oil pretty quickly and your skillet's getting dry, you can add a touch more avocado oil as needed. You want them to be nice and golden brown like this right here. Oh man, look at that. Now we're gonna go ahead and season this up. I'm using my all-purpose seasoning, which is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. The AP original is sold out right now, but the hot version is available on the website. So grab that if you want to or you can just use salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. I like to add a little sazon as well. Totally optional, but you can add whatever vegetable seasoning you like. Once they're nice and golden brown, they got a nice crispy char on the face side. We're gonna start moving them around and allow them to start cooking on the other side as well. I'm gonna turn the heat down at this point, and then I like to cover them with foil and allow them to steam. So basically the process here is to get a nice char on the face side of the Brussels sprout, get them nice and golden brown, all the flavor from the bacon fat. Then we're gonna season them up, add the bacon back to the party, and then cover them with foil or a lid and allow them to steam and get nice and tender. 
Towards the end, we're gonna add those shavings and let them get nice and crispy and add some texture to our Brussels sprouts. And they're gonna be absolutely delicious. The perfect weeknight side dish. There we go. We got to cover with the foil. We'll let that steam until they get nice and tender. And now we're back to the reverse sear steak. So what you're gonna need is a baking sheet lined with aluminum foil and one of these wire racks. I like to use this because it keeps the steak elevated and allows air to circulate around it. And it helps it cook evenly. So now we're gonna go ahead and insert our thermometer right into the thickest part of the steak, right in the center of the steak. We're gonna set our temperature for 115 degrees. That's where we want it when we pull it out of the oven to sear it. And then we're gonna pop it in a 275 degree oven for about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how large your steak is. As you can see here, this is not the most desirable looking steak, and that is why we're gonna sear it in a cast iron skillet with some butter, garlic, and herbs. We have some rosemary and thyme. I'm also gonna use some avocado oil for its high smoke point. Avocado oil has a smoke point of 500 degrees, which is much higher than a lot of others like olive oil. So I highly recommend using that. And then we're gonna heat this skillet until it's smoking hot. Takes a minute or two to get up to temperature. Once it starts to smoke a little bit, we're gonna add the steak to the skillet. Always lay the meat into the skillet away from you. That way if it splashes, it splashes the cameraman and not yourself because you always gotta protect number one. Sorry, Moody, just kidding. But you wanna press down firmly to get maximum surface area contact with the skillet. That's gonna ensure you get a beautiful dark crust on your steak like this one right here. Say it with me guys, looking good. That is the trademark of a perfectly cooked steak when it has that nice crust. Anytime you go somewhere like Ruth Chris or Peter Luger's, they're gonna have a beautiful beautiful dark sear on their steak. And now we're gonna add some more flavor to the party by adding two to three tablespoons of butter, some garlic, rosemary, and thyme. At this point, I like to turn the heat to medium low and allow that butter to melt. Once it melts, I'm gonna start basting the steak until my heart is content, throwing all that delicious herb and garlic infused butter right on top of the steak to add tons more flavor to the party. I personally like my steak done at 135 degrees. So here we're gonna use this final touch digital food thermometer. We came in right at 136, which is perfect. You wanna let your steak rest for five to 10 minutes before you slice into it. That's the hardest part of this recipe is being patient. We're gonna plate this up with our bacon Brussels sprouts. I threw a little potato on the back end just to show off a little bit. I'm trying not to eat too many potatoes right now, but Hey, it's the holiday season, let's have some fun. We're gonna go ahead and carve this steak up so we can see how we did. Remember guys, on the left side is the New York strip and on the right side is the filet mignon. I personally like the filet mignon, so Porterhouse is one of my favorite steaks, but there's nothing wrong with a good T-bone steak. You get a little bit of both. We're gonna carve everything off the bone. My wife loves the bones, so we're gonna save that for her because I'm smart. And then we're gonna slice this steak up. Look at the beautiful crust. It's nice and juicy after the rest. Perfectly cooked, somewhere right between medium rare and medium. Let me know in the comments how you like your steak. If you like it well done, you should just save your money and eat beef jerky. I don't make the rules, guys. Going in for a taste test any minute now. Man, that's a good looking steak. Say it with me, guys, looking good. We plated it up. I gotta try these bacon Brussels sprouts. That's my absolute favorite vegetable side dish. Anything you can add bacon to, I'm all for it. That, my friends, is a fork drop recipe. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.